Hello and welcome to the Next Gen Racing YouTube channel for our weekend preview. And this weekend we have a bit of a hybrid preview between the jumps action and the flat action over the weekend. Obviously we have um, racing from Kempton and we have the Ida Handicap Chase at Newcastle. And then we have the Lingfield Winter Derby as well as the weekend we have the Saudi Cup out in Riyadh. Um, as always, we are writers for the Racing Head magazine. There is still a link in the description where you can get a free digital copy of that. Do check that one out. Um, and we're only a week away from our Cheltenham preview night. This is going to be the official preview night that we're going to be doing. The actual video for the preview night will be out a couple of days later. I think Sunday the 6th of March is when you'll look to see that out. And I believe Jack and I are likely to have around six videos out the following week um, for you guys to get stuck into. So looking forward to working all of that Cheltenham content to you very soon there are limited tickets still available for the evening at pagan cricket club so if you do want to get a hold of them do give me an email the email is just on screen a moment ago jack i bet you're looking forward to this weekend like i say we've got a hybrid preview a bit of flat flat action a bit of jumps action should be a good one yeah it's a nice little teaser of a weekend kind of building up towards the Cheltenham festival we kind of have a, a few li decent little quality competitive battles going on and of course you get to see lord north back in the winter derby so yeah quite excited yeah, it's going to be very interesting, and we'll get Jack's thoughts on the Winter Derby later on in the preview. Now, let's kick off, kick things off with Kempton, where we're going to be previewing three grade two races there. And it's the 150. This is the Adonis Juvenile Hurdle. It's a two-mile grade two, and Knight Salute is your nine-to-four favourite for the Milton Harris team. Pleasant Man, the unraced horse, is four-to-one. Impulsive, one, 13-to-two. Mocha Davati is 15-to-two. Greystone, nine-to-one, um, and double figures bar here now jack i actually think that the the favorite here i think he's only got one horse to beat in my opinion that's pleasant man um i think that the favorite the one thing i found fascinating is that impulsive ones in here and, and when we did our anti-post preview where i actually put this horse up for the boodles handicap um i don't think the horse is actually going to the boodles now I believe the plan is to go to entry with this horse so um do check that one i think he has been left in it though so it'd be interesting to hear the thoughts but i did mention that the fact that he had been beaten by Pleasant, uh, sorry, by Knight Salute twice before, I wasn't sure that they'll probably look to take him on in something like a triumph. But look, they're coming here to take him on in a Grade Two contest. Like I say, he's been beaten twice by Knight Salute um, in Pulse One, so I don't think he's going to have much of a chance here at all. Um, Porticello obviously has the form as well with Knight Salute, who finished second behind um, Knight Salute. I thought that Porticello looked really good the last day as well, really, really good. And obviously, he's probably the leading contender at the moment for the British team going into the triumph. Um, I just think that the, the, the horse who is second favourite here is very, very fascinating. He is short, he's four to one for all he's done race in a decent grade two contest like this, taking on a horse who, you know, is a leading contender for the British team in the triumph. But I just think that Pleasant Man, we're, we're relying on the form that we've seen on the flat, where this horse beat Pied Piper on his debut on the flat. Um, we know what Pied Piper has done since going hurdling and, and, and joined the jumps game. But he was also part of a very good handicap that Jack and I were actually there to see at Goodwood, um, where he was behind Nagano and Siskini in that race, where that looked a decent race, where Pied Piper kind of got a bit of a revenge and finished in front of him that day. Um, I'm going to say something quite, I don't know if it's controversial now, but if Pleasant Man were to go and win this race, I think the Irish should be slightly worried in the triumph because I think he's got to be very, 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 very good to win this. I think the Knight Salute is no mug himself. And I think if he were to go and do this comfortably, I think he's either going to do it comfortably or he's going to be beaten comprehensively. I really do. And if he does do this comfortably, I think that he's going to be a, a, one of the tough nuts to crack potentially at the festival. Maybe he does skip the festival. Maybe they're another horse that, that might go to Aintree. But I genuinely think if he beats Knight Salute, I think Knight Salute's no mug and, and I think he'd, um, he'd be a player. But Jack, look, I'm going to be with Knight Salute. It's a favourite to kick things off, but he's probably the obvious one in here, isn't he? Yeah, 100%. Look, I was very keen to back Knight Salute until I saw Pleasant Man. I mean, he's enough to kind of scare me away from the race. Um, obviously, rated 95 on the flat, beat Pied Piper last time out. I've actually watched him twice in the last year because I saw the Melrose as well, oh, which right. he finished seventh in. So, um, yeah, I mean, his, his win at um, Yarmouth was, was decent enough last time out. But, yeah, he obviously coming from Roger Charlton's yard to, to Paul Nichols. It's fair to say Paul Nichols knows what to do with the juvenile when he needs to. So, He's probably a little bit too short, about four to one. I don't know what you say about him winning easy. I think he's probably going to be a little bit of a battle up top between him and Knight Salute. But I, I think Knight Salute, look, he's done nothing wrong. He won at Doncaster, giving um, Impulsive one weight. Porticello's gone on to win at Chepstow, of course, in grade one company in last time out. He's clearly the one to beat, but I think Impulsive one as well has a, has a lot to find. I know he took a big step forward last time out. 
But look, he has a lot to find with Knight Salutes. And yeah, if I'm being honest, I think Pleasant Man kind of is scaring me away from the race. I think um, Knight Salute is definitely the one to beat, but I'll probably be just be observing. Okay, yeah, one to observe. I think, like, like Jack said, Knight Salute is the one to be. I do fancy Knight Salute in here. But it's going to be fascinating to see how Pleasant Man gets on. And if he were to go and win, to, to hear the thoughts of Paul Nichols after the race and what the plan could be with him. Now, let's move on <laughs> to the 2.25. That's the Pendle Novices Chase. And it's over two and a half miles. Another grade two. Pick Dory is your two to one favourite. Manella Drama is five to two. Fantastic Lady four. Uh, Manella's Bank is nine to two. And Goa Lil is 33 to one. Um, Jack, before I probably go and tip up another favourite here, I'll let you go first. Yeah, I'm actually a huge fan of Manella Drama, you know. Um, I mean, on ratings, I know he's got a little bit to find with Pick Dory, £7. But I'm just a little bit sceptical about Pick Dory's jumping. I mean, he was not fluent uh, at Sandown last time out when finishing third. And I know, he, of course, he won uh, quite easily the time before beating Favoir or Ascot in, in that grade two. But for me, I think Manella Drama, Donald McCain and Brian Hughes, they're, on, they're an absolutely red-hot form. And I mean, I was really impressed with how he handled the step up to two and a half miles. Of course, finished second behind my, my Droger in grade one company over hurdles uh, last year, over two and a half miles. But look, he was also giving weight away to, to Harding to Soy that day who finished a distant second but I mean he was a classy hurdler over two and a half I think this step up and trip has really sorted him out and hopefully he'll be able to come a, a classy um, chaser I think this is a great opportunity to land another big pot Yeah so I mean she, I do agree with you with regards to Pick Dory but I do like him in here I think the last day at Sandown we know how tough Sandown is as a jumping test it is very difficult but I think we're going to see a form boost potentially here to the mighty Lom Presse who was the <laughs> He beat this horse, but I think it was around 27 lengths on the day. Um, and he was beaten by motionless Charlie Deutsch as well. And I just think that Pick Dory at the front that day, he, he was there were some that he put in some decent jumps. And occasionally he hit them, especially, I think it was like the 13th, I think he hit pretty hard. Um, and it kind of ruined his chances. But he was never going to get to the fever that day. He was really impressive. I'm hoping that he goes on to win the Turners. Um, and then you mentioned the time before where he ran at, ran at Ascot and beat Favois. I think was no mug really um, himself. I mean, last weekend obviously we saw this horse go back over hurdles, beaten by Gosh and Dadjo. I actually think that's a very good race, and um, I still think there could be good form in behind in that race. So I think Fave was a, a decent horse, even with that um, length and a half defeat behind Warlord at the Winter Millions as well. So I think the form there stacks up. I think Pick Dory is going around a course where jumps are a lot easier. I think Kempton's a, a racetrack that a lot of trainers like to use, especially for their novices. And usually first time out because it's a great introduction on one of these flat tracks. And I just think that potentially he's, he's he is the best horse in here. Um, if he can get around this course and, and kind of not make any mistakes, I think he's going to win this quite quite easily. I do think that he is a classy animal. And I just think that form of that silly ours could stack up. So we'll have to wait and see. But it's going to be Pick Dory for myself in that race there. And then obviously Jack will be with Manila Drama. Let's go on to the last race that will preview um at Kempton and god it's another favorite that could be potentially put up by both of us here but this is the three o'clock it's the dove cut novices hurdle a grade two over two miles shall we have one more is best priced here at 11 to 10 i think with one bookmaker most bookmakers are going around evens or uh, <coughs> even odds on 10 to 11 uh, orkin risk is 11 to 2 isio and frary dami they are 15 to 2 and then that is it for this race um there's not many in here for shall we have one more to take on jack what do we think of shall we have one more because he's a typical Gary Moore novice very quirky has his ability definitely there but we're not sure whether you know we've seen the full, full best of this horse even though he was very impressive last day yeah, look, he's, he's clearly got a lot of ability. As you say, he's, he's a classic Gary Moore kind of a youngster, isn't he? He's, he's a little bit of a lunatic, definitely. Kind of things need to go in his way. Oh, look, he was very impressive at Sandown last time out, but I think even money is probably not a fair enough price. 11 to 10 isn't really a fair enough price. I think probably 6 to 4, 7 to 4. I know a lot of money has come for him over the past few hours, so I'm probably just going to have a stab at the outside of the field, Legionnaire. Because there is there is the eight runners, and um, of course it's hurdling debut for Legionnaire, and he's obviously had four runs over uh, uh, in bumpers. Sorry, but he's been somewhat unlucky. He won at Aintree and then had to come very wide last time out at Lingfield to finish fifth. But I mean, he was a little bit hampered, but he's hit the line with plenty of conviction in every single bumper, which he's actually running. And I think hopefully the introduction to hurdling, he'll be able to take a big step forward. He receives weight all around, and as we've seen with Milton Harris, who trains Night Salute. Um, had a good uh, has a good record with four year olds. So hopefully with the eight runners, uh, three places each way. I think you got about forty to one at the moment. I have an each way stab with Legionnaire.
legionnaire. Yeah, sorry, I didn't have my full notes in front of me there um, with the eight runners. But yeah, he's a decent price in here. But in terms of this race, I'm not actually going to be playing it at all. Um, I didn't want to look at it for too long, to be totally honest, because it's a race where potentially, you know, shall we have one more? He could just show that he has the full ability. I think he's one of those horses, like we say, with, with these quirky Gary Moore horses, I think they do take a little bit of time. And I think he's only going to keep improving even going into next season. Uh, Gary Moore even came out saying that, you know, he doesn't think he's seen the best of this horse yet even though we saw what he did at Sandown the last day. I think he's going to probably take Goshen's shoes off, go down the hurdling route while Goshen goes chasing and put some new shoes on. So um, these colours are becoming very familiar to me, but I'm not going to put the horse up. Um, but I do think Charlie have one more is going to probably go and win this. And Jackson, you with uh, a decent outsider here with Legion Air. Now, here we go. Oh, God, this this race here. Oh, you probably know I'm going to sip up in this. You probably look through it, and I hope you don't sip up the same horse. But this is at Newcastle. We're here for one race. The Burton Ida handicap chase uh this is over four mile one furlong a very decent staying contest here history of fashion is six to one eclair surf is seven to one danilo dairy is eight to one domain de lille is nine to one courtmaster tens check it out elevens and 16 to one and bigger the rest uh do you want to go first or do you want me to go first no hit me hit me right okay well this is the last time that i'll be putting this horse up and i actually think this is probably the best time to put this horse up i actually regret putting him up uh, prior to this. But this is Achille. Um, those who have been on this channel watching some of these big staying handicap chases know that I've probably tipped him up for maybe two or three this season already. Um, look, we know Venetia's horses are in absolute fine form and they have been all season. I'm a big fan of this yard. Look, Charlie Deutsch won't be aboard this day. Uh, Hugh Nugent's going to be taking the ride and he's been claiming three on a horse who's now rated 135. Now, we know this is probably, well, this is the, the longest distance he's gone since he ran in the Midlands National, um, where he was staying on, he, he was staying on stoutly, but just a little bit too late. I think the harder they go and the further they go, the better this horse seems to look. But look, he's rated 142 in the Midlands National, and he did put in a decent display. Um, and I'm hoping that, I don't think the ground's going to be no issue um, over at Newcastle. I just think that potentially he'll get out and start jumping, and, and he'll just be staying on at the finish. It's just whether they've gone hard enough or whether he's staying on in time. But He's 18 to 1 in here. I really fancy his chances off 135, especially with the £3 claim. I think Hugh Nugent is very good for his £3. So, yeah, he's going to be my bet in here. And that's a killie for the Venetian Williams team, the beautiful grey. I love him. But, Jack, go on then. I can't believe what I'm about to do. I actually can't believe it. Uh, I'm also going to be with a killie. I can't. I, can't, I actually can't believe I'm doing it. Oh, I know. my God. You've seen the light. You have seen the light. <laughs> I'm taking I'm taking a leaf out of the Sam Hart book here. Look, I, I can't know you've believe been, it. You've been That's why you gave me the credit. I know he's 12 years old, but he just looks so reasonably treated off 135. He's yeah. shown this season that he still has plenty of ability, finishing fourth in the Welsh National. Hugh Nugent was on board that day, got a good um, click out of him, so hopefully he'll be able to do it again. I mean, he's six pounds lower than that Welsh National. I know last time out he didn't jump all that great, but he stays and he stays and he stays. And I mean. If I wasn't going to tip him up, just because I knew you were going to tip him up, I kicked myself in the foot. So, look, he didn't jump that great last time out. Hugh Nugent, hopefully he can get a good click out of him. And hopefully now is the right time to catch him at 18-1. to 1. I mean, I can't believe I'm doing it. But, yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with you and putting up a killie. This could potentially be the only joint selection on the preview this week. It's an 18-1 to 1 shot, ladies and gents. An 18-1 to 1 shot. Um, but look, you'll probably find out how I kind of how I feel about this horse towards the end of the preview as well <laughs> by what I do with him. But yeah, I really fancy his chance. So Killy for myself and Jack in the Ida Chase at Newcastle. Let's switch away from the jump. <laughs> uh, let's get away and we'll go on to the flat. We'll preview two races. Uh, we've actually got a decent card at Lingfield, but the one race we're going to be previewing is the Lingfield Winter Derby Stakes. This is a Group Three over a mile and a quarter at 205 there. Lord North is your 11 to 10 favourite. Alan Kerr is 3 to 1. Fancy Man is 5. Forrest of Dean is 12. Al Zarakan and King of the South, they're 25 to 1. And you get 100 to 1 about the other two in here. Right, Jack, we could easily just tip up the favourite here. Look, he's, he's been behind Tarnara and Magical in the past. He's won the Dubai Turf. Realistically, I mean, if he hadn't had the 11 month sort of layoff, he'd probably be like a 5 to 1 on shot in here. Could you be realistically be backing this horse at 11 to 10? 
No, I wouldn't realistically be backing him, but I realistically also wouldn't be backing anything against him. Um, look, I'm absolutely buzzing to see North, Lord North back. I absolutely adore him. I'm, I mean, his win in the Dubai Turf last time out was absolutely electric. I mean, seeing that he burst a blood vessel after the race, I was absolutely bemused because, I mean, I thought that was a career-best performance by a, a long shot. I know he won the Prince of Wales in good style, but the turn of foot he showed that day over nine furlongs was absolutely electric. Frankie Dettori got an unbelievable click out of him that day. So, I mean, I, I know he's six now. I'm not too worried about the setbacks that he's had. Of course, he was meant to try and go and uh, regain his Prince of Wales crown last year. But, yes, he is six. But I just think he's probably going to be too classy for, for his opponents. I think Alan Kerr still wants a mile and four. I know he probably didn't stay in the, in the um, arc, but I think that was probably a little bit of a... Uh, exceptional circumstances on that kind of ground. I mean, of course, he was second in the jump on to, to Mishri for a distant second, I think it's fair to say. But no, look, I think Lord North has all of the class here. You've got the likes of Forrester Dean and Fancy Man in behind, who I think have it all to prove against Lord North. Look, he's as consistent as they come. He's done it after a break. He's got Rab Havlin on board. I think he's got a lot. I think they've got a lot to find on ratings. Like, yes, John and Thady Gosden aren't in the, in the greatest of form and neither is Rab Havlin, but I think Lord North, it'd be great to see him back to winning ways. Yeah, it really would. And, uh, you know, we both fancied this horse for a few decent races throughout last season. It's a shame we didn't really get to see him. Um, but look, hopefully, you know, after this run here, we, we see the best of him coming into this season. Uh, be interesting to hear sort of the route and the plans for this horse during the flat season. I can't believe we're talking about the flat season. Um, but yeah, <laughs> there's, there is one horse in here who I think potentially, if, if there is the without market on the day, it's not a race that I'd probably be going overly large on. But I do like the chance of Fancy Man, um, who won the trial here. Uh, earlier in the month. He's actually won at Lingfield twice this season already. Um, I know he hasn't beaten too much, but look, this is a course where I do think horses tend to sort of, you need a horse, a horse who can go around this course. And the one thing I like about Lingfield is that massive slingshot um, that they have when they come around the bend. And when they pull out wide and you suddenly see a horse flying from the back, Fancy Man looks like one of those horses that seems to relish it. Um, and I can see him flying home late. Whether it's good enough to catch Lord North, I wouldn't know. But you know, I do think that potentially if there is a without market, he's a fair price for it. I think he could be a small little bet in this race. But look, we, we, we all hope Lord North does come back. I agree with Jack. Alan Kerr probably is going to need the mile for him. We'll probably see that over this season, especially the fact that he's matured and he's a year older. So we'll have to wait and see. It's a really fascinating race, but a, a nice little uh, card there at Lingfield for the Winter Derby. Let's go on some international action now. We go to Riyadh. For the Saudi Cup, a Group 1 out there. This is on the dirt, over a mile and one furlong. And last year's winner is in here, and your favourite is Mishrif for the Gosden team. He's 9-4. to four. Mandaloon is 9-2. to two. T.O. Keynes is 7-1. to one. Art Collection, 8-1. to one. Midnight Bourbons, 10-1. 12-1 to one. Twelve to one and bigger. The rest in here. Now, last year's winner, Jack Mishrif. Uh, he beat two-time Grade 1 winner, uh, Charlatan. He also beat the Pegasus second and multiple Grade 1 winner, Nick's go in that race. Uh, this year, I mean, in terms, of, if you look at the second favourite, his most impressive performance has come in the, I think it was at the Hill, uh, sorry, the Haswell Stakes, was it, where he won by 18 and a half lengths? Uh, yeah. I think that's the, the performance that was mesmerising, especially around an American track to win by that distance in a grade one like that was very, very impressive. But I personally, Jack, I just think that I don't know. I think that Mishriff has potentially got an easier race this year. It's just whether he can bounce back from sort of, you know, the, the mishappings that happened at the end of last season where he kind of didn't perform to his usual level. But I think if Gosden's got him right back on the dirt, I don't think 9-4 is that bad a price. Yeah, well, um, just quickly on Mandaloon. I mean, the, the Haskell Stakes, of course, Hot Rod Charlie actually was uh, won the race and it was just um, uh, Mandaloon was 18 lengths ahead of the, the third on the day. Hot Rod okay. Charlie was disqualified after the race. So, um, yeah, yeah Mr. it would be great to see him do the business yet again. But I just think he's probably a little bit vulnerable this year. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Mandaloon. I was before the Kentucky Derby and I, I still think he has plenty of ability to, to throw down the gauntlet to Mr. If here. And, I mean, he's got a recent run under his belt in the Louisiana Stakes, which it was kind of a bit workmanlike. It was nothing too impressive whatsoever but I mean he's only been beaten by Hot Rod, Hot Rod Charlie and Medina Spirit uh, in the last year and of course they were both disqualified that, uh, on those occasions so I think nine furlongs on this surface could really play into his hands it's going to be nice and sharp it's going to be rapid pace as we've seen I know Mishroof's as versatile as anything I think probably as he's got a little bit older he probably wants a tiny bit further and perhaps a turn of foot quite isn't there I know in the Judd one of course he was electric 
But then at Ascot last time out, he wasn't so much. I think this is going to be a bit sharp for for Sealaway, who of course is twelve to one. We of course had, a, had the brilliant day with Sealaway in the Champion Stakes, which was rated I think in the top five flat races of, of the year last year. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of tune Ryan Moore can get out of him. I think it's probably going to be a little bit sh- sharp for Francois, uh, Francis Graffard's horse, though. And I do think Mandaloon at seven to two. I think he's a, a relatively fair price. Of course, we don't really like backing the, backing the international runners all that often, but I think Mandaloon may have a great chance here. Yeah, it's not an easy one for myself and Jackie. We're not, you know, our over avid fans of the dirt racing, but this is a group one that we wanted to preview. The one horse I did want to mention that you've already mentioned was Seal Away. I'm not going to be putting this horse up, but it's fascinating to see because obviously this horse is now with Francis Graffard, who's a very, very good trainer in himself. Ryan Moore takes the ride here, which I do find fascinating. Um, interesting to see him get the ride over a French jockey in here. Um, I just think that potentially he could he could be a shock in here. That if he takes the dirt, he could come out um, and could look like the shock. I think Real World's also fascinating in here. Um, horse, I think, is going to take a massive step forward this season, even further, and potentially sort of step up right into the Group 1 class. We'll be discussing that in a few months. Well, probably in a month's time, where we do a, a flat season antipost video, we'll be looking at horses to follow for the season. But I do think it's a really interesting contest. I, I just think Mishra's the one to be. I, I think that this is a an easier race than he had last year personally um and i think the nine to four is a, a fair price about him but look it's going to be a, a hell of a race it's a really decent card out there at saudi always look forward to it. it's a lot of racing they'll probably be switching from different screens constantly on saturday for the flat and jumps action but a really interesting one but jack with mandaloon at seven to two and i'll have a do you know what? i'll have a small stake on seal away each way potentially for a little bit of a shock because i can't <laughs> leave him alone i can't uh, we had such a day of him on, on champions day so I tell you what, if we had Goshen and Adagio running this weekend, it'd be the the Sam Hart preview where we just have every horse that Sam Hart likes is running. But um, yeah, it's not going to be. Not... <laughs> but I still can't believe it. I'm still in shock after Achilles. I'm looking at my notes, going, "God, like I can barely see them." I'm... <laughs> I just don't, don't believe oh, I'm it. Right. Sorry, I just apologise. We have a little bit of a special tip coming up now because this was actually requested in the comments and someone said i've been waiting for you guys to put up a lincoln tip now i was discussing with jack about probably about a week before that comment came in saying i've got something for the lincoln um and the comment was asking for a haggis special now this isn't a haggis special this is a david omara special for the race and this horse is currently 33 to 1 i really hope he does run here because i can't see him going off this price of the day but the horse's name is darkness for the team uh, David O'Mara's record in this race, we go out to last year, he had the third and the fifth, obviously 2020 it wasn't run, uh, 2018 he had second, 2017 he had the winner with Bravery, who I'll discuss in a second, uh, 2016 he had fourth, 2015 he had third, he's had a, a good record right in this race, he likes to, to target horses at this race and he's purchased this horse from France called Darkness and this reminds me a hell of a lot of when Bravery won the Lincoln in 2017. One of my favourite bets I've ever had, actually, was on Bravery to win the Lincoln, or I had it 25 to 1 that day. Um, really fascinating, because this horse has come over from France, and his actual uh, like maiden win was beating a horse who ended up finishing second behind St. Mark's Basilica in the Prix de Poulain, which is really, really decent form. Um, you, you look at his two-year-old form, I mean, he was only a length and a bit behind Sealaway as well. Um, he's been he's been in these sort of you know group races, listed races where he's just struggled a bit um, since being a three year old, and this is very similar to what happened with Bravery for the Aidan O'Brien team before transferring over to O'Mara. I just think that potentially his rating of 95 is, and I, I genuinely think he could be you know a listed or group performer in this country. Um, I can see David O'Mara getting a lot of a lot of a big tune out of this horse. I really do. Sione Golding. The horse has been running on soft, and Jack and I looked into this, and I, as I sent it over to Jack, running a lot on soft out in France. Now, whether he's been trained and that they've decided that he runs better on soft, I don't know, but Sony should have no problem with a little bit of better ground. Um, and we tend to look at the Lincoln. I mean, we're talking about late March, so, you know, we're probably looking at good to soft ground, potentially. You might get the odd time where it is soft. Um, but I just see it being no issue. And 95 is a rating. I can genuinely see him being rated even a a stone, uh, even a stone heavier than this in, in the future. So um, I can see him being put up massively after this race. But I just think 33 to 1, it's a far too big a price for a yard who, who like to, to have runners in this race with a horse who, you know, we, we haven't seen before in this country, but could be quite exciting. So darkness at 33 to 1 is my special tip. 
this week. I really hope. God, that'd be a hell of a one to land. Um, I don't even know if anyone's actually put something up for the link in yet. Right, let's go for our naps and next best this weekend then. Um, you do both of them. Do your nap and next best now. Uh, so my next best is going to be Manella Drama in the 225 at Kempton. I think hopefully it'll be slightly too classy for Pick Dory and hopefully be a bit of a, a jump a little bit better than last time out. And then um, the nap is going to be Mandaloon in the Saudi Cup. Okay, there we go. Your nap is going to come from the Saudi Cup. Right, uh, I haven't got a price on my nap, actually, but it's a double uh, with Knight Salute and Pick Dory at Kempton. It's going to be a double, and my next best is going to be an each-way bet on Achille. The uh, double nap, I'll put the price up on screen now, but I'm going to be putting Achille up as a, a next best here. A big price, and I genuinely do think he's going to land. I mean, uh, What's anything, the world you, come to? <laughs> you put the curse on him, if anything. Um... Right, well, that's it for this week's preview. Like I say, we're going to have a preview next week. Um, I think we'll be previewing the more battle hurdle next week at Kelso. Uh, there is action. It's not the, you know, we are getting just slightly closer to Cheltenham now. Um, so the action is, uh, you know, it's slowly dying down before we hit that big week, big week in March. We're going to be having that. And like I say, the, the next video that will come up after that will be the 6th of March for our Cheltenham preview. Uh, those who will be seeing on the night for our Cheltenham preview, those who've got tickets, we're looking forward to seeing you there. Myself, Jack, Matty Batcher, and Niall Hula Hands. It's going to be a really fun night. Excellent giveaways. Uh, great charity raffle. Hopefully, some decent selections as well for you guys. But yeah, looking forward to having you along. If you do want tickets, do get in touch because there are still a few remaining. But that's it for this week. Um, and we will see you next week for our weekend preview. Thanks for watching. <laughs>